we would like you to subscribe to our Streaming Praise Radio YouTube channel. That's Streaming Praise Radio. Like us on Facebook, streamingpraiseradio.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, sprlivefm.com. This is Canada's first gospel internet radio station, sprlivefm.com. My Lord was with me, and He has taken me step by step back to good health. Won't you come along this journey with me? Hi, my name is Dr. Deborah Williams, and I'm here to give you a word of encouragement, your health tip, and a prayer. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Indeed, a good morning, Claremont, and good, all, good morning to all the workers at the radio station this morning. We are already at November 1st, 2021. You believe it, guys? I can't still remember when the year does start, and already the year is almost finished. But it's an indication that our Lord Jesus is preparing to return. He's shortening the days. He's preparing. He's tired of Satan, you know. Jesus is tired of Satan, just the way we are tired of Satan. And everything has been put in motion by the Father for the final days. We're in the final of the final of the final days. And if you guys want confirmation about the final days, just open your Bible and read Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, and read Revelation 13 and 14. It's all there in the Word of God. So we have no reason to fear. Our Father prophesied it through His Son and through the patriarchs and the prophets, and He has told us how this great controversy started in heaven, Revelation 12, and how it's going to end on this earth so we're here as a light in this darkened world my brothers and my sisters remember we're christian we're followers of jesus christ so this morning in our word of encouragement i hope you guys had a wonderful weekend because i had a wonderful weekend the darker the days get is the more joyful i become because i know bible prophecy is being fulfilled and my lord is coming back i have no reason to be Sad or depressed or distressed, I have the light of the Son of Righteousness, and He comes with healing in His wings. Praise the Lord. All right, so this morning, I'm going to share with you something I studied over the weekend John chapter 6. Now, John 6 is a very long chapter in the Bible, it has 71 verses. And I'm going to summarize what I got from it. And I want all of you, my precious brothers and sisters, and I send you greetings from Jamaica, a beautiful island in the Caribbean. I want all of you to read John 6 today with prayer. Remember, never read the Bible until you pray. You've got to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he will not leave us comfortless. He will not leave us as orphans. I will send another comforter. So when we study the Bible, we must pray and ask for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit opens the word of God so we can understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, John chapter 6 starts off with Jesus feeding the, the 5,000 men, women, and children <clears throat> with the, the, the fish and the bread, right? We see Jesus, um, the multitude were following Jesus because they saw the wonderful miracles that Jesus was working. Jesus was healing all manner of diseases in verse 2. When we look at the Bible, the Bible must become our reality. Remember, you know, we are not like the world in darkness. We're not trying to figure out what to do. We have a clear commander and chief. He is the balm of Gilead. He is our great physician, right? He's our high priest. I, I, I love, I love Isaiah 9, you know. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. No, he was with the multitude and he was healing their diseases, it is the same Jesus that heals our diseases today. But the reason we're seeing so many Christians not being healed is because they don't believe. Unbelief is blocking us from getting our blessings, my brothers and my sisters. So here is Jesus with the multitude. And they were with him for quite a while. And of course, now they're hungry. And so Jesus um, asked <clears throat> about food. And Philip answers him and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little that's verse six one of his disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes right 
But what are these among so many? And Jesus said, make the men to sit down. Now there were much grass in the area. In the area. So the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. So we know these 5,000 men, their wives and their children are there plus other persons. So we know easily we could have about 25,000 persons there with Jesus. But Jesus took the loaves and he took the fish and he just simply gave thanks. He prayed to his father and he fed all of them with this fish and loaves. Now when they were, fill when they were filled in verse 12, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that they remain that there be nothing lost isn't jesus wonderful he's always concerned about not wasting we, we must be concerned about not wasting and there were 12 baskets full with the fragments and of course we know as we go into deeper studies that jesus gave these to the persons who were there to go back to their communities and share with their with their neighbors to tell them about this great wonderful miracle that jesus himself had worked now after they saw Jesus working this miracle, verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet who would come down into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and make him, take, take him by force, to make him a king, he departed away into a mountain himself alone. So the Jews were in slavery under Roman oppression and they were waiting for the king to come, the Messiah. And Jesus was there and though he was working all these miracles, yet still there was so much unbelief. And the greatest area of unbelief was coming from the church leaders. Yes, the priests and the, and, the, and the chief and the elders. They were the ones who were most against our Lord and Savior. So we come over now to verse 26, right? And they come now and Jesus left and they're following him. From 18 to 21, he talks about Jesus walking on the water and they thought he was a spirit. And Jesus told them, be not afraid. You know, it's always, as you go through the Bible, you see Jesus always telling us, be not afraid. Today in 2021, COVID is going on and governments are speaking all manner of foolishness and people are trying to threaten us and they're trying to force their poisonous injection on people and they're saying, if you don't take it, you can't work and you can't, you can't go here or you can't go there and you can't go travel. Jesus is still saying, be not afraid of them. We got to keep our hearts and minds fixed on Jesus. So now in verse 26, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you are seeking me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. So these people were hunting down Jesus, trying to find Jesus. And Jesus knew in their heart. That the reason they were hunting him down is that even because they believed he was the Messiah and the Savior, is that even so much they believed that he had healed the sick and he had raised the dead. The people were following Jesus for bread and fish. No, my brothers and my sisters, I know none of you hearing my voice today are following Jesus because of bread and fish. In other words, you're not following Jesus because he has given you a house or given you a car or given you an education. Because so many persons follow Jesus because of the earthly things. And if they pray and they don't get the things they want, they take their confidence away from Jesus. We've got to trust God because he has already established on that cross. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We have enough evidence that Jesus is the Messiah, is our Lord and Savior, our High Priest. We don't have to link our faith in him based on if I ask him for a car and he gives me, then I will worship him. But if I don't get the car or I don't get the husband or I don't get the wife or if I want to get pregnant, I can't have the baby. If I have the baby, I worship him. If no baby, I'm not worshiping. We need to stop that foolishness. And I see it around me all the time. So Jesus continues now and he has this wonderful discourse and they're talking about they want Jesus. Well, verse 30 to show them a sign. But Jesus tell them they talk about the manna that Moses brought down, right? When when they were in the desert. And Jesus said, Those who ate the manna that Moses brought down, they are dead. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Praise the Lord. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And if you look very carefully from verse 33, come all the way over to verse 51. Jesus keeps repeating over and over, 
All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And as you come coming down, coming down at verse 40, here comes Jesus. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at that last day. My brothers and my sisters, at last day is coming. You know. This great controversy with devil is not going to last forever. The Father has appointed a time when it shall come to a complete end. Now, as I see, you know, I go on Facebook and I have friends calling me and people are wailing and weeping and crying because their loved ones are dying. I repeat again, if you are a Christian, ensure that you are spending your time spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone you know. Give them a chance to know about Jesus and make a choice. Because if they go down to their grave, let them go down taking Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Accepting him as their redeemer, their king, their sustainer, their substitute. Now Jesus goes down in verse 51. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise the Lord. The Father's already done it, brothers and sisters. Coming over to 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, when I read that verse now, I say, wow, there are a lot of people walking around, right? But they are literally dead. They are spiritually dead. They are spiritually dead. Because if you're not feasting on Jesus and the words of God, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you literally belong to Satan. You're dead. If I call the devil, will soon be completely destroyed. But remember, hell was not made for God's children. It was made for the devil and his demons. But if you choose to go with him, you're going to be destroyed also. Jesus come down to verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I, have, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Praise the Lord. Now, interestingly enough, after Jesus gave this discourse, the sad news is, when we come down to verse 66, it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. Praise the Lord. Now I see many Christians cracking since last year. Cracking. We are going through a time of trouble now. You know, it's a little time of trouble in this earth. People are losing their houses. They are losing jobs. And everything is so uncertain. The whole world is in this complete disarray and i'm watching people who used to be strong christians losing their hold on jesus turning their backs on jesus and just like the disciples he said many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more so my brothers and my sisters don't let this time period which is our testing time period cause us to leave jesus jesus can send food with a raven to feed you the same way he fed elijah jesus can Turn water into red juice. Jesus can send it to a, a widow who has her son and she's about to make her last bread with the, the meal and the little oil where she have leave. And Jesus can cover you there. There is no shortage of God's ability to take care of us. So do not leave him. No matter how tough the times are, even unto death. We say death before dishonor. We shall not bow to these people. We shall follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. But Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gave the word. He says, Master, if we leave you, where are we going to go? It doesn't make sense, brothers and sisters, to leave Jesus. Where are you going to go? Because Jesus gives us the word of everlasting life. We've got to remember, our life in this earth is a pilgrim's journey. 
and then comes eternity. That's why the Lord is coming back. No, it ends in verse 6, 70 and 71, where it says, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? <laughs> here comes now the serious part, brothers and sisters. Where I hear, boy, you know, I'm not going to church anymore because I heard of that false prophet. I'm not going to church anymore because that person offended me, that elder offended me, that deacon, so on, so on, so Listen to my man. Jesus said, I've chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil. <laughs> so it makes no difference. We don't follow people. We don't follow pastor or deacon or, 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 or bishop or these people or, or these so-called you know, apostles. We follow Jesus. And the reason so many Christians are deceived is because they're not spending enough time in prayer and reading the word of God. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, dear God, for waking us up with your breath in our bodies. We thank you for the food that you give daily, the spiritual and the temporal food. Bless us as we go through the rest of this program. Is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to move on, guys, to our health tip. We're going to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole arm of God. So this morning... I'm going to take you through a disease that we call cystitis. Now, it's C-Y-S-T-I-T-I-S. Now, any disease that ends with tis, T-I-S means infection, right? So you have arthritis, and once, once you have a tis at the end, that is infection. Now, cystitis, or bladder and urinary tract infection, that's really what it is. Symptoms, pain in the lower abdomen and the back. Frequent, urgent, and painful urination. Urine often has a very strong, unpleasant odor and may appear cloudy like pus, isn't it? Right? A desire to urinate even after the bladder has been emptied. Now, children also can come down with uh, cystitis. So it's very important that um, we, are, we are monitoring our children and listening to them when they say, Mommy or Daddy are feeling this burning coming from that area. Now, the causes. Now, cystitis is an infection of the urinary bladder. It is most frequent. It is the most frequent blood, bladder, uh, sorry, bacterial infection in women. So women tend to come down with, with, with cystitis more than men. Right? So ladies, listen up very, very carefully. Last week we spoke about kidney stones affecting mostly men. Now, this, is your, this, this week is your week. The cause is generally bacteria which have ascended up from the urinary opening, right? But it is less frequent from infected urine sent down from the kidneys. Now, cystitis most often occurs in females, as I said before, right? The urinary outlet of the urethra is close to the vagina. So remember how our bodies are made up, ladies. So we have the, the, the bladder and we have the urethra. And the, 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 the lining that takes the urine from the bladder coming out sits right above the vagina. So they both exit at very close areas. So if you have bacteria in the vaginal area and you are wiping when you use the bathroom from back to bottom, you're carrying bacteria up to that little opening right where the urethra ends and you're causing bacteria to go up and then you get this infection. Now, frequent and urgency of burning urine is the most obvious symptom of cystitis, right? But you can always go to the pharmacy and buy a home test, a dip, dipstick home test, and you can check your urine to see if you have a, lot of, a large quantity of white blood cells in it, and that will be an indication that you have an infection in your urinary tract. Now, what are some of the natural remedies we can use for cystitis? Now, I'm going to talk about the natural remedies. I'm going to talk also how we can prevent it, all right? So let's say you have the burning, you have the issues with the urination coming out, and you're sure, based on what I told you a while ago about the symptoms, I have cystitis. I have a bladder or a urinary tract infection. Number one, you want to increase your intake of water, but please ensure it is distilled water. That's the best water for this particular issue, right? The second water is good for you is what we call spring water. So the chlorinated water, the water with the chloride in it is not good for you at all. Number two, um, cranberry juice. 
right? The acidity in the urine can be helped by drinking cranberry juice. So if you're having the issue, try to drink about one quart, four glasses of cranberry juice throughout the day. That will help you tremendously in getting rid of the bacteria that is causing this problem. Also, I want you to start taking a probiotic supplement, right? Go to the health food store. It's a vegan source probiotic supplement and take about 25 billion in strength and that will start helping to heal it. Eat a nourishing diet of fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, peas, and beans. Put away the flesh, put away the fried food, put away the sugar, put away the highly processed foods, put away the tin foods, put away all the baked products that have enough of margarine and dough conditioner in them. All of this can lead to bladder infection. You only do a, a potassium broth because potassium deficiency can also lead to renal problems, right? And all you do is to prepare the broth, get um, Irish potato, and you just peel the Irish potato, right? And or wash the Irish potato properly because we want the peeling to be a part of it. And then you're going to get some carrots. And you're going to boil the Irish potato with the carrot, lots of garlic and onion, right? And then now you will drink that, that potassium broth. Very, very healing for urinary problems. The use of aluminum cookware is one of the, 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 the causes of um, this problem. So please ensure your cookware is from stainless steel, from ceramic or from glass, but no aluminum cookware are to be used in the house. Now there are some natural remedies that you can buy at the health food store that you will use. Now remember when we're making herbal teas, our general guideline is one teaspoon of the herb to eight ounces of boiling water. If you are buying a herb where it leaves or the blossom, we, we, we steep it. So we just pour the hot water on it and we call it, we steep it, draw it, as we say in Jamaica. If it's the root or the bark or the stem, you have to boil it, right? So if you're boiling the root, you have to boil it for about maybe five minutes on very low heat and then you steep it, strain it off and drink it unsweetened. So we have juniper berry, the parsley leaf, a herb called yuba ursi, right? One called bear berry. Um, one and in Jamaica now for some Caribbean herbs because those are herbs that you can easily get in Canada or overseas but in the Caribbean we have simple herbs like the bamboo root is very good for um, kidney problems right we have one called broomweed the English plantain guava leaf is excellent for kidney issues and cystitis problems right we also have the a herb called maidenhead fern and we also have one called seed under leaf. Now I know for you guys in Canada, you might be saying, what is Dr. Williams talking about? These are Caribbean herbs and these are the Caribbean names for them. We have comfrey, the corn silk, leaf of life, lemongrass, nettle. We have a herb in Jamaica called rat's ears because it's shaped like the ears of a rat, right? But it is excellent when you take it for kidney issues. Now, ladies, here are some preventative measures now. Listen very carefully. Now, women should especially avoid bacterial infection ascending into the bladder. The urinary outlet of the urethra is close to the vagina. So, improper female hygiene is the most common cause of cystitis, right? The woman should start wiping from the front and go backward. Now, I learned that when I was a child. My mommy said, Honey, when you go to the bathroom and urinate, wipe from the front to the back, never the opposite way. When sexual intercourse is, is, um, is done, please, ladies, ensure wives go and have a bath. Clean that area because remember how germs can come from the man to the woman. So you want to have a bath and clean the area up, right? Um, you want to also ensure that when you are wearing your underwear, you buy cotton underwear. Very important. The cotton underwear lets air through and absorbs moisture better. Avoid buying these commercial douches from these um, pharmacies, right? These hygiene sprays, the bubble bath that people love to sit down in, ladies. These will help to cause bacteria to build up in that area and can lead to cystitis. Soap, 
right? The soap that we, we, we use so much soap, but we don't wash it out properly and it can stay, stay there and it can cause infection. Wash carefully when you're seeing your menstrual periods to avoid bacteria from going up to the urethra. Do not use tampons, lady. Tampons are not very healthy, you know, even though it might be convenient, right? But if you are having urinary problems, you gotta stop using it altogether. Rinse your underwear very well, ladies, and make sure your underwear is put out in the sun. I know lots of women leave their underwear in their bathroom and let it just dry in the bathroom. Bacteria can build up. You need to get sun hitting, kind of hit, sun kills the bacteria, right? So we want to ensure that we um, shower. And if you are somebody who goes to the pool and swim, once you go to that um, chlorine water to swim, make sure you have a proper bath after. Dress to keep your extremities, your hands and your legs are warm and cover covered, right? Whole extremities weaken your trunk area and can lead to urinary tract problems. Birth control pills may also end up causing cystitis and other um, diseases with hormonal imbalance in our women. So those, those are some of the general recommendations that you can use. Also, I have another one where you can... Do what we call a cis bath, get a basin, fill the basin with hot water, test it, so that you can sit in it without burning yourself. And then you're going to add about one cup of vinegar in that water and sit in it for about 20 minutes, twice a day, if you are having a urinary tract infection coming from cystitis. And that will help you tremendously. Increase your intake of garlic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic, right? You can also even... Put the garlic in the cis bath and it will help you a lot. Now, remember we have three herbs that I always recommend as a natural antibiotic. We have the golden seal, the echinacea, and the olive leaf. And you can always buy these at any health food store. And that will help to take care of this issue of preventing the cystitis. But if you have it, it can be healed using God's natural remedies. Let us pray. Father, you are our daddy. You are Abba Father. And we thank you that we can call you Father because you sent Jesus to rescue us from Satan. The devil has this world under his control, but those whose minds are fixed on you are not controlled by Satan. We thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit is the comforter. He keeps us on the narrow road that goes through the straight gate that leads to everlasting life. Father, we're in a new month. It's already November 2021. will soon be a, a memory. But many persons went to sleep in this year. Father, we don't know if tomorrow we will be here. So let us use today to give honor and glory and praise to you, Lord, to repent of our sins and put them away, receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. He died and hung on that cross, bearing the right to be our Lord, our substitute, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of this earth. He defeated Satan. And we can say today, hallelujah, I am redeemed by the blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our kinsman redeemer. You are our brother. You are the one who gave your life so that we who had life, who had no life because of sin, can now have life in you. So, Lord, this morning, we are going out there as the light of this world, not murmuring and complaining like everybody else, not wondering what's going on because we have from Revit. Revelation to Genesis, from Genesis to Revelation, you have told us what was going to happen before it happened. That's why we know that you are God. No other common God knows anything about the future, but you, Lord, knows everything. We thank you, Lord, that even if our, oh, if our sins are red like scarlet, Jesus' blood can make them white as snow. So we thank you for your love and your blessing. We look forward to the return of Jesus. This morning, Father, I want to pray for those who are sick among us. Those who are physically sick or emotionally sick or mentally sick or spiritually sick. Oh Lord, you have given us the balm of Gilead. May we feast on the bread that was sent down from heaven. He has come to give us eternal life. Thank you this morning, Lord, for teaching us about bladder infection, cystitis, and how we can prevent it. But if it comes, Lord, how we can reverse it using the natural remedies. Bless all of your children across the world. It's our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. Um, I have one question to ask you. You sure. talked about um, the hands and extremities warm to prevent infection. 
Right. Now, whenever we are walking around Claremont with mm-hmm. um, our arms bare when it's cold, mm-hmm. what it does, it causes the blood to concentrate too much in the middle cavity, right? Mm-hmm. And when you have too much blood um, concentrating there, we don't have proper blood circulation. Now remember, blood circulation is what takes the white blood cells out to the entire body to keep us in good health. So when we're all, like, you know, you see the women are always wearing tank tops and short, short, short shorts. Yes, yes. We don't have proper circulation. And we need proper circulation to take the white blood cells around the body so that it can also help to overcome any viral or bacterial infection in the body. And that's mm. the reason. Ah, okay. But that, but, that, but does that work for men too as well or just strictly women? Oh, oh everybody. everybody. Men and women. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we gotta we gotta be covered up. We gotta be covered up. Okay. Well, I um. Well, when my hands and feet go cold, <laughs> my whole body goes cold anyway. So I try to yeah. keep my hands and my feet cold, um, warm. So especially in this cold season that we're going through. Doctor Williams, I want to also let you know, as of next week, we'll be on same time frame with you. I just checked it out. Um, it's the seventh, okay. and then All next right. year we'll be flying. We'll be going forward on the thirteenth of March, which is the weekend now. Yeah. We, okay. we go earlier, so just to let so you know means, that. Okay, so it means then I will have to go down to my office and do the presentations from my office, which means then, Clermont, yes. I can do video instead of audio because I'll be in office. Awesome! <laughs> you, listen, I think the listeners are so looking forward to this. Yes, I heard right? the audio. This, the the <laughs> listeners are looking forward to this. So for those that are looking at and on the... Um, on the YouTube channel right now, you'll be getting a treat starting yes. next, next <laughs> week. And also, um, you can also find Dr. Williams' uh, YouTube, uh, which is Deborah Williams. That's correct. Deborah Williams on YouTube, as you can find us at Streaming Praise Radio on YouTube as well, if you want to rewatch this particular videos. And we're beginning to itemize the videos and, and what De- Dr. Uh, Debs is talking about so that you will not miss out on what is actually being said. So we want to thank all of you from um, uh, Fun City Radio FM and Success Radio and right here at StreamingPraiseRadio.com, SPRLiveFM.com, that is watching and listening to Dr. Debs. And I hope you're taking note. Don't just listen. When the time comes and God says, but did you? Dr. Williams has been saying it every Monday. I've been saying it from Monday to Friday, so you have no excuse. No excuse. Amen. 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 Dr. Dr. Debs, thank you so much for sharing with us once again. So God richly bless you. God bless you. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. You too. Blessings to you. Love you. Bye-bye. Take care. Dr. Deborah Williams. Live as uh, live and in as we say live and in living color as of next the November eighth, November eighth. You will see her.